Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online service. We are a church in Irving, Texas who believe in the Word of God, the will of God, and the power of God. Our prayer is that something is said to enlighten you, empower you, and inspire you throughout your walk with the Lord. May God bless you abundantly. So gather outside the church. When you are going to survive, God has to step in your step my eyes into the hills from which come my help. I believe, brothers and sisters, that with this text today, we see God inviting you back. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us without falling before his throne. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Continually. Always, or as we say in Virginia, every day, every day. Now I had to, I had to scream a little bit because I think everybody, we kind of noisy this morning. Y'all sound like a bunch of kids in the first day of school. And so uh, Deacon Ivory and I was trying to figure it out, and he whispered in my ear, "You know they got an extra hour of sleep this morning." So since they got an extra hour of sleep, they're a little rowdy this morning. But with that extra hour of sleep, we're going to praise the Lord. Some serious up in here. Amen. Amen. We would like to welcome you to this hour, 10 o'clock unity service. We'll have a scripture and a prayer, and then we'll uh, be led into our worship by the best praise team slash choir this side of heaven. Amen. Amen. If you are able, would you please stand for God's word? Come on in, come on in. Let him in, bro, I'm sorry. Good morning, good morning. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Hebrews. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. If everybody has it, it reads, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the world who being the brightest of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, who makes this angel spirit and his minister a flame of fire? I've read for you seven verses of the manuscript. May the Lord have a blessing upon the reading, hearing, and especially the doing of his mighty words. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If there are any on the back of the sides, let them come on in, come on in. No, you stay right there. Good morning. Oh, we're so blessed today to be back in the house of worship. My wife and I, we are excited this morning because it's our youngest Son's birthday today, you know. Our our baby, our baby, you know. Even though he's 39 years old today, you know. it's 
been a while. It's been a while. But God is good. He's he down in Florida. Right? He, him and his fiance down in Florida right now. Right. I told him it must be nice, you know. It must be nice. But we're here to praise the Lord this morning. We had a wonderful prayer meeting yesterday. Man, we had a wonderful prayer meeting, you know. I wish more of you all was here, you know. Maybe before we got one more before the year, uh, maybe we, we more could come, you know, because we need prayer. We need prayer. We all, we all stand in the need of prayer. Jesus came. Excellent is thy name in all this earth. Oh God, you're so wonderful today. Oh God, you just blessed us to come out to the house of prayer so we can praise your name a little longer, God, while we still have a chance. Oh God, we're so thankful this morning that you allowed us to get about those beds, oh God, and get dressed, oh God, and come out to the house of worship one more time and for that we say thank you Lord oh God you've been so good to us far better than we could ever be to ourselves oh God but God you blessed us when we go out and you blessed us when we come in oh God you just keep blessing us over and over again and for that we say thank you Lord Oh, God, we thank you for this fellowship this morning, oh, God. We just feel your humble service, oh, God, coming out here to give you some praise and honor because you're so worthy this morning to be praised. Oh, God, you've been good to us. You've been good to us, oh, God. Despite what's going on in this world today, you've been good to us, oh, God, because we're still here, oh, God, and we don't want to play church no more. We don't want to play church. So we'll, we came out here to praise your name, to lift you up, oh God, because we know our time is running down out here, God. We know we're not going to be here too much longer, oh God. But while the blood is still running warm in our veins, oh God, we want to lift up holy hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, I come praying for peace, oh God. I come praying for peace 
in this world today, oh God. We know, oh God, you are on the, the cows on a thousand hills, oh God. Please, God, have mercy on us, oh God. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy. I ask that you be with our pastor, oh God, and his family, oh God, as he bring the message today, oh God. We hope something he say, oh God, might have someone to come down here and give their life to you, oh God, because you're the only way. There's no other way, oh God, but by you. We praise your holy name, God. And when we, too, have to give up living down here on this earth, oh God, we know you're already gone on to prepare a place for us, oh God. And when we get there, we want to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Come on in and enjoy the glory of the Lord. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name, and for his sake I do pray. Amen, and thank you, God. Oh, God. Good morning, my brothers and sisters of the Ben Washington Baptist Church. I'm Minister White with your information, announcements, reminders, and news you can use. Yes, yes. Hello, good morning. Here's Lanita. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to my BWBC family. Happy birthday to all our November babies. It is National Donut Day, so treat right. yourselves today. Right. Let's get started, Reverend White, with our monthly, rem our weekly yeah, reminders like, for just our ministries. What's going on on Monday? Men ministry. That's a Zoom meeting at 7 o'clock. The BWBC men are invited to join in the discussion and in the study. So come on, join us Monday night, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock on Zoom. You'll be glad you did. Plus, you get a chance to ask them some questions that you may have about biblical things that we study and spiritual things. And ladies, it is the first Monday of the month. It is our monthly meeting time and Bible study with Lady V. Please come. We're on Zoom, 7 p.m. and invite a girlfriend to come along with you. Tuesday, what's going on? Uh, Tuesday. Well, I'll keep yeah. going. Sanctuary <laughs> choir rehearsal. I think it's this week, but I know the kids are practicing too. But Sanctuary choir rehearsal, 7 p.m. If you would like to join the choir, please see our choir president, Sister Gwen Armstrong. It is a great time to join the choir with Brother Eric and the whole team. Wednesday. Wednesday, noonday Bible study in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Fall semester of the Roy Strasser Bible School classes. Yes, yes. Everybody's welcome to join us. This includes our young adult Bible study students. We'll have no Thursday Bible no study Thursday. class. That's no Thursday. But on Wednesday nights, we normally have Bible study, but this is special. This it's is the Roy Strasser oh Bible study school. Yes. Uh, where we break off in little small groups and study different things like mm -hmm. hermeneutics or uh, experiencing God. So it's a very special type of Bible it's study. Great. We've been successful for the last four weeks, I think. This is week five, I think. Yes. But uh, please join us for that. You'll be glad. To. And don't forget, youth, you have it too. I think this week our youth are having choir practice, so getting ready for our second Sunday youth service. All right, and then that takes us to Sunday, 845. We start with the Power Hour of Sunday School. See uh, Brother Colvin Gibson, our superintendent of Sunday School. We have Sunday School for all ages. 10 a.m. is our worship experience for everyone. We are on Zoom and in person spread the word bwbc is worshiping together now we'd like to highlight just a few announcements that are coming up this month first we want to start with a very big thank you from our youth ministry we would like to say thank you to our bwbc family for all the donations provided for our light it up for jesus celebration some of our youth are still on a sugar high, I promise you. We would like to send a special thank you to the parents and other volunteers that came out and worked, and work they did. Your continued support does not go unnoticed. Thank you again, and we love all of you. Amen. And on November 8th, <laughs> calling out all our BWBC veterans, please send us a picture of you in your uniform no later than next Wednesday. Yes. If you sent one in on last year, we got it. Yes. Send it to our church office. Email address is on our church website. Yes, veterans. I love Veterans Day. November 12th, we are preparing for our annual Christmas production. If there are any adults that would like to work with our kids, or if you would like to be in our production, see Sister Tia by November 12th. 
please, our rehearsals will begin on November 19th. Love the Christmas production. This could be your opportunity to practice for your upcoming Academy Award and your yes, Oscar. So yes, I love it. Join I love in, it. get some practice in. You know you want to be famous. I do, I do, I do, I do. And on November 18th, BWBC will host our food pantry distribution at 10 a.m. till all the items are gone. On Friday, November 17th, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. We need volunteers to make boxes, yes. sort food, pack food box, boxes. Additional details, please see Sister Jackie Arkadine when they ask for food tasters. Then, of course, I'm going to check We don't need food tasters. Oh, man. <laughs> but maybe for this next one, November 20th is our Thanksgiving basket distribution. We are collecting donations right now. Go in the bag before you leave. Look at the list of items we need so that we can put together a Thanksgiving dinner for families in need. If you know a family or maybe you need just a little help this Thanksgiving, please let us know. A little goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Call our church office or let Sister Gwen Malone wave at him, Gwen, if you're in service today. No. We are taking the list and we're taking donations of items needed. The food donation again for the baskets are November is November 20th. All right. All right. And then our annual BWBC Christmas celebration. Woo! It's gonna be November, uh, it's gonna be December 9th at the Embassy Suites. Tell us about it, Tim. It's gonna be in Irving, of course, off Highway 183 in Valley View Lane. All are invited for just $60 per person. Woo. Sign up and start to pay today. Let's dress to impress and bring the holiday season in together. See Brother Bradford or any member of the Senior Saints Ministry for all the details. You have enough time to get that Christmas outfit that you really want <laughs> and wear it and so you can show up and show out a little bit. Yes, a and bit. don't forget, you need to put your name on the list no later than I believe like November 15th, but you need to have your monies paid by December 1st. Mm -hmm. So go back there. If you've got your name on the list, you need to pay something, five or $10, so we'll know you're really, really, really committed. <laughs> All right, ministry leaders, don't forget to submit your brief announcements each week by Tuesday at noon to our campus administrator, Sister Dun 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 Dunning. Dun. For all the details of these uh, announcements and more, see our website, go to our Facebook page, or see YouTube for our announcements and other sermons that are out there. These have been our announcements for this week. BWBC family, please govern yourselves okay. accordingly. Thank you very much. Put your hands together and let's bless God in this place. Has he been good to you? The Rangers won, they're Super Bowl, they're um, world champions, but God is his champion, right? No matter what, they close schools and everything else to celebrate. But this morning we've come to lift up the name of Jesus because he's worthy. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Sing with me. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My heart was wounded, I picked in my veins. Nevertheless, I'm forever with thee. Whom else in heaven? None on the earth. My heart's desire is to be with thee. Yeah. My heart and my portion. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is 
the strength of my heart. Come on, y'all. And my portion forever. My heart will swoop down. I was pricked in my veins. Nevertheless, forever thee. Whom else in heaven? Not on the earth. My heart's desire is to be. No matter what, God is the strength forevermore, forevermore. Psalms 13, verses 4 through 6 says, The Lord is high above all nations, His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who dwells on high, who humbles Himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth? Our God is a great God, and there is no one like him. And this morning, I don't know where you are or what's going on in your life, but God is here, and he's standing in the gap for you. This is a song I want to teach you this morning, but I want you to join in with me and sing. And our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is bigger than any other God, but we just have to believe. Amen. You believe that this morning? All right. I want you to join us. I'm going to ask you to stand and sing with us. We'll get some words on the screen. That would be great. Water, you turned it to wine. Out of the darkness you shine. There's no one like you. Uh, none like you oh, oh, oh into the 
darkness you shine up from the ashes you rise there's no one like you <laughs> none like you our God greater our God stronger God you are higher than any other our God is I'm done with power, I got, I got, oh, yeah. You got it? You got it? All right, here we try to stick together. One of the darkness, open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. Nothing like you Into the darkness you shine Into the darkness Up from the ashes you rise Up from the ashes you rise There's no one like you None like you None like you Oh, 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 oh Our God Our God is greater Stronger God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, oh, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, I got, I got. Then the word says, and if God is for us, who can stand against us? If God is with us, who can stand against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is with us, who can stand against us? If God is for us. But then what? If our God is for us, then who can be against us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? If if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could stand with stand? If if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, who can stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Then what can stand? Our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then then what can stand against? And if our God is, then who could ever stop us? Then one can stand again. 
greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God. Our God is greater. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God you this morning is you are greater stronger God there's no one like you because you're worthy of our worship you're worthy of our praise thank you for the cross thank you for the price you pay Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne. Crown you now with me, the crown you reign victorious. The darling of heaven, the darling of heaven, crucified, worthy of the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, you for the price you pay, bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came, and gave amazing grace, thank you for the love of the Lord, thank you for the nail peace hand. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and in prayer. Oh, worthy is the Lamb. The throne, we crown you now. You reign victorious, oh, 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 I am lifted up, Jesus, Son of God, the darling, darling of heaven, crucified, worthy is the Lamb. Father, we worship you this morning because you are God alone. We thank you for the sacrifice you made on the cross. 
We stand in your presence this morning celebrating you for who you are. Father, we love you. We adore you. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You're worthy, O Lamb. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Worthy is the land. You're worthy. You may be seated. Dick in Washington, can you can we do the announcements now? Okay, we can do the announcements now. All right, I'm going to do some announcements. Now, if you are a first-time visitor to Ben Washington Baptist Church, will you please stand? Any first-time visitors? All right. <laughs> Welcome to Ben Washington. That's Brother Milton's grandson. And and he's very proud of his grandson. His grandson stood to attention, too. I like that. He didn't hesitate. Adults tend to hesitate. Y'all look around and, and, and should I stand or should I not stand? But that young man just sprung up in action. Now, uh, we have another good reason to celebrate. Uh, I was told that Brother Larry Smith and his wife are celebrating 45 years of marriage. Amen. <laughs> Sister Smith, you deserve a medal. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Well, to, to, the, to the lovely couple, we honor you today and... and uh, we appreciate you, 45 years of holy matrimony. Amen. Now, the Texas Rangers won a World Series, and I get a text message saying, Mansfield schools are closed, and then I heard Arlington ISD is closed, then I heard Grand Prairie ISD is closed. Then I heard Irving ISD is closed. And then the guy that was working at my house just to say Alvarado ISD was closed too. And I got a report because Brother Al and I was having lunch and we were, I was watching the TV screen and they say that was about anywhere from 400,000 to 600,000. Now, they're cheering for a team that won a championship after 63 years. And here we are, we got a savior. We ought to be cheering more for him who saved us from our sins and gave us victory. Amen. Amen lights. I know a man who died for my sin and who rose from the grave and said, I am alive forevermore. That's who I, that's who I want to praise today. Amen. All I'm saying is, if the world can celebrate a baseball championship, we ought to certainly be celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all I'm saying. And all I can tell you is, Jesus is not going to be dethroned. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. So we have victory in Jesus. 
Now, this is the month of November, and the first Saturday of the month we celebrated on yesterday, and we had, we had, I counted maybe 20, 21 people here for prayer meeting. And we spent the hour praying over the church, and I just want to have you take the time to, to consider some of the things we prayed for. We prayed for the peace of Jerusalem. That, that's that whole Middle East situation that, that's in the news. The Bible teaches us to pray for those in authority. So we pray for the, those in federal level, state, local, and schools. And we pray for first responders. And we pray for those who serve as primary caretakers. We prayed for uh, pastors, ministry leaders, teachers, evangelists, missionaries. We pray for the children, the youth, and young adults. We pray for the leadership at Ben Washington, which are the board and the deacons. We pray for authentic worship. And to worship him in spirit and in truth. We pray for those who are widows and shut in. We pray for those that are, um, we pray for the unity of our church. We pray that the Lord will send laborers. He said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And we have some positions of need in this church. And we and and we and if the church don't do it, it's not gonna get done. And so those those were some of the, the prayers we prayed on yesterday. But we also praise God for his faithfulness. And we gave praise to God for the comforter of the Holy Spirit. We praise God for his goodness and his mercy. Somebody ought to be shouting right there. You are a benefactor, a benefactor of his goodness and mercy. Did you wake up this morning? And that was by his goodness and his mercy. Did you wake up clothed in your right mind? That was by his goodness and his mercy. Were you able to get the church in a vehicle this morning? And that was by his goodness and his mercy. And so we praise God for all that, but now we want to give you a chance. And, and because we got the Lord's table here, some of y'all might not be able to come up, but where you are, we're going to ask that you stand for our altar call. If some of you can't come to the altar, y'all come on. But if you can't get too close, that's all right. And I want to read this card from Brother Sam and Sonia Jones. It's to the BWBC family. Words are not enough to say thank you for the encouragement, your hugs, your hand holding, your overall support shown to my family. We are deeply grateful for your care and support. Love always, Sam and Sonia Jones. Thank you, Brother Sam, for that, that card. All right. What is the theme for this year? Pray. Do y'all believe prayer is still in order? Do you have a need? Do you have a need? Uh, uh, are you in a need for a breakthrough? Prayer can do that. Amen. Will you bow with us for a word of prayer? Father God, we gather together in this place which is called the house of prayer. We acknowledge, Father God, that you are God, that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth, and, and that you hold the whole world in your hands. Father God, we acknowledge that you spoke the world into existence. Thank you, Father God, for uh, creating man in your image and Lord God we come gathered around the altar or standing in the pews acknowledging father that we can't make it without you we need you father we can't even breathe unless you bless us with your grace and your mercy 
And Father God, we gather today because we are standing in the need of prayer. Father God, we, we are living in a fallen world. We're living, Father, in a corrupt world. We're living, Father, in a world that's gone disarray. But Lord God, we know that in the midst of everything, you are still in control. And so, Father God, those, those requests that we made on yesterday, we make today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as the whole church gathers together. We pray, Father God, for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, Father God, that there be peace not only in the Middle East, Father God, but there be peace in our own homes, that there be peace in our country, and that there be a peace of mind in our own hearts, Father God, then, Lord God, we do pray for those who are in authority. Your word declares that when the righteous are in control, that, that we are to praise you. So, God, we thank you, Father God. We pray, Father God, that there be men and women who serve in authority, Father God, that they will look to you for guidance and for direction. And then, Father God, we pray for this fellowship of believers called Ben Washington Baptist Church. We pray, Father God, that we will be on one accord. We pray, Father God, that you will send laborers into this vineyard to do the work that you called us to do. Bless our deacons, bless our teachers, bless our ministry leaders, bless our marriages, bless our children, bless our youth, bless our young adults, bless our senior saints. Father God, we're praying, bless our board, we're praying, Father God, bless our, our, our endeavors, Father God, to uplift the name of Jesus. Bless us to be a beacon light, Father God, in Bear Creek Community. Bless our choir as they continue to lift up your holy name. We pray, Father God, that everything we do, we do in accordance to your will. And Father God, we're praying that your love will, your love will encompass us. Your love will keep us. And you say, Father God, by this shall, shall men know that we are your disciples by the love we have one for another. So I'm praying, Father God, that the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the love, the joy, the, the peace, the long-suffering, the kindness, the gentleness, that, that the fruit of the Spirit will be made manifest in this fellowship. And I pray, Father God, that there be any here who know not Christ in the pardon of their sins. I pray, Father God, that they be delivered. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, if there's anybody, Father God, who are bound by addictions, I pray, Father God, that they be set free today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let no weapon formed against your children prosper this day. So, Father God, let us know the truth, for the truth shall set us free. Father God, set us free today. Somebody with a heavy heart need to be set free today. Somebody, God, with a troubled mind need to be set free today. Somebody, Father God, who is wondering whether or not they should keep on keeping on. Father God, set them free today. Let them know what Jesus said. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you for the comfort of your Holy Spirit, Father God, who abides within, who tells us that we are his own. We pray this prayer, Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen, amen, and amen. Give God some praise, amen. Sister Parrish, it's good to see you back there. Amen. Thank you. We've been praying for you. Now, there's a couple of things I want to make the church aware of before we prepare our hearts to, to give. Now, some, I would say probably 85 to 90 percent of the people who, who enter into this sanctuary come through the fellowship hall. And, and a small percentage may come through the, through the front door. But in case you don't know, we've got a new church sign. Yeah. 
and it looks good. And it's bright red. Amen. So I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, I'm also grateful that uh, we had an AC unit that, that was not operating during the, the hot part of the summer, and we got that replaced. And it's, it's, it's running well. I'm grateful. But I must be honest with you that, you know, we, uh, uh, we had some roof damage, and we had uh, to replace part pieces of the roof. Uh, and we're getting ready to uh, go into our budget preparation season for, uh, for 2024, and we have needs, and I'm not a beggar. Uh, all I'm going to say is, don't give the Lord's money to the devil. All right, I didn't get a whole lot of amen. Y'all just looked at me. Don't give the Lord's money to the devil. Uh, and so we set a budget, but unless we start giving more, it looked like we ain't going to make our budget. Sister Gibson got her big old book out in there. I just saw it. Amen. I know you bring in the sanctuary, but okay, that's all right. That's all right. I got eagle eyes. But we need you to... Uh, as a scripture that says, and it's in the book of Proverbs, it says, Honor the Lord with the first fruit of all your increase, so shall your bonds be filled with plenty. I'm just a firm believer that, that, um, that being a good steward is not just, your, not just your gifts, not just your time, but also your, your, your finances. And, and what kind of giver does God want? And so as we are preparing our hearts to give, don't increase your giving because Sneed said do it. Increase your giving because you believe that's what God wants done. We can't do ministry effectively in Bear Creek or around the world unless we have financial support from you. And, and so that's why we ask. But now let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father God, that you bless us as we prepare to give, that we give with the right attitude, the right spirit. We give, Father God, with joy in our hearts, with cheerfulness of mind. And we pray, Father God, that the gifts that we give will serve for the ongoing of kingdom work, both near and far. Bless the gifts as well as the givers. We pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask now if you stand and, and as you prepare to give, follow the gatekeepers. And you can, you can uh, give in the tithe box or the are the box that the deacons, Brother Richardson and Brother Ivory, are holding. Either way you give, you can give online, amen? amen. To those who are watching online, you can give online.
Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So good. So good. Lord, you are good. Sing. Lord, you are good. Oh, people from every nation. Come on, stand to your feet from generation. Here we go. We were. Well, We ought to worship him because of who he are, who he is. Amen. All right. Amen. We are, I was going to say who you are. All right, all right. I got it right. I got it right. All right. Amen. Look at all these English teachers in here. Y'all, something else. All right. Now, if you have your Bible, the printed word, which I'm encouraging all deacons to bring their printed word. I know y'all got a phone, they got the app on there, but there's something about the printed word that, you, that I just strongly encourage you to bring. Now, in Luke chapter 15, very familiar passage of scripture, I want to read the parable of the lost son.
It reads, Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's high servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your high servants. He arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf there and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field. He came and drew near to the house and heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said to him, your brother has come and, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore the father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friend. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. He said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. I was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Father God, I pray, bring, bring your word to life in this time. Father God, speak to me and through me. And may we all receive your word with the meekness of spirit. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk about the power of love. I want to talk about the power of love. Now, if you read the entire 15th chapter, you got the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. And you got the parable of the lost son. All three parables are really geared to show God's love for humanity and God's love for you. As I was reflecting about the power of love and the written word, I remember this was before cell phones and text messages. Uh, and this was before... I was able to pay for my own phone. Anybody old enough to remember when the phone was in the hallway? And if you wanted any privacy, you had a long extension cord, you could take it to a room. And, and, and I met this girl in college, and I really, really liked her. 
But my mother didn't want me to spend all the time on the phone, and I couldn't say I couldn't say what I wanted to say in the hallway, because other people would be listening. So what I did, Sonia Jones is, and Sonia's an English teacher, but what I did, Sonia, is I decided I would pen a letter of my love for my girlfriend. And, and you know, I, I, was, I, I was new at this, Michelle Stingley, so, and, and Vanessa still got the letters, Gwen. But I remember one of those letters Sister Taylor me said like that, because I really love her. I said, I love you more than a hog loves slop. That's a whole lot of love. That's, that's a whole lot of love. I poured it on thick. In chapter 15, but it's the true of the whole Bible. It's God's love letter to you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And see, God loves us so much that he took the first step. He had been wounded because of our sin. The fellowship had been broken because of disobedience. And God made the first move to reconcile us to him. He didn't wait for us to take the first step. He took the first step. And if there is going to be reconciliation between you and God, you need to know that God is reaching out to you even today. It's telling you that, that I love you in spite of what has transpired because I want to have fellowship with you again. And, and, and the parable of the lost sheep talked about how, how a man had a hundred sheep. But one sheep got away. And he pursued the one sheep because that one sheep was precious to him. I'm telling everybody in the room, you are precious to the Lord. And he will go out of his way to bring you back to him. And the story of the lost coin, the coin, it's this, the coin was lost in the house. You can actually come to God's house and be lost. But yet that man searched, uh, uh, she searched, the, a woman searched the house until she found the coin that was lost. You know, that's what God, God will keep pursuing you. He will pursue you till the very end because he loves you that much. I suggest to you, don't, don't get caught up in, in, in the day to day that you can't hear the voice of God saying, come back to me. Y'all heard that song. It's a worldly song, but it, it, it tells, a, it tells a story. It says, reach out. I'll be there. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough. Y'all know that song. To keep me from you. Y'all act like y'all so righteous. Y'all don't even... But in the parable of the lost son, father had two sons. The youngest son said his father, he couldn't even wait till he died. 
He said, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And the father did it out and gave him what was to be his Jackie. The Bible says that the son didn't wait around very long. The Bible said, if, if you look, it says in verse 13, and not many days after. And where as soon as he got what he could and got packed up good, he was gone. Some of y'all, some of y'all are parents, and you'll probably say, I'd be glad when they could just pack up and leave and be gone. Well, his son packed up and left. Took all his worldly goods. Took the inheritance with him. And the Bible says this. He requested his inheritance. But number two, he removed himself from his father's protection. Y'all need to write that down. That was good. He requested his inheritance he removed himself from his father's protection. Is there anybody in the house who want to admit that you said at one time, I can't wait to get grown so I can leave this house? Is there anybody willing to admit you made that statement? I can't wait to get out of here. So he made the request. And, and, and as soon as he made the request and got his goods gathered, he removed himself from his good father's protection. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. You can remove yourself from your father's protection. The third thing that happened with this young... Uh, impatient son the Bible says he journeyed to a far country and wasted his possessions with prodigal living in other words he was living high off the hog and he Wasted. You ever seen people get something and, and as soon as they get it, they just waste it? You ever, you ever, you ever had a check and, and as soon as the check was cashed, within a few hours you had spent it all? But y'all's looking really, really holy today. Y'all not even acknowledging that you did that too. Okay? Somebody, I'm not the only one acting crazy. He spent, he spent it all. Verse, verse number 14 said he, he spent all. That's one reason why you ought to put something away. Because it says here that, that there was a famine. The reason why you say because you don't know when the famine is going to hit. So you save, for, you save for a dry day or you save for a rainy day, but you save. Just because you make $100 don't mean you got to spend $100. And we got to the point where we not only spend $100, but we get a credit card to spend even more. Cut those cards up. Except one. Okay, Nish. <laughs> all right, all right. First thing he did was he requested an inheritance. Second thing he did was he removed himself from his father's protection. But the third thing he did was he regretted his actions. He regretted that he spent everything. He regretted that he didn't leave something aside. He regretted that he spent all his money on people who really didn't even care about him. He regretted that he spent his money in Las Vegas. 
He regretted that he wasted his money in the casinos. He regretted that he bought Jordans for his feet. He regretted that. He wished he had had some of it left, but it was all gone, Jennifer. Fourth thing that happened, you know, when you don't have a job, I've been there before. You got to eat. You got to have a place to stay. He had to find a job. The Bible says here that he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country who gave him a job feeding the swine. As he's feeding the swine, it came to his attention that he would have gladly filled his stomach with what the swine were eating. Now, you know that you got to be really, really in bad shape to want to eat what the pigs eat. Now, you'll eat the pig. Brother Al took me to lunch and and at first, I was trying to be obedient because my wife put me on this diet plan, and, and I just ordered uh, beans and rice. And I said, Pastor, is that all you're going to eat? And I brought you out here, and that's all you're going to eat? So I said, okay, Al, you're right. I said, give me a pork chop. <laughs> Did I say that, Al? Listen, he was so hungry, the Bible says no one gave him anything. See, some of us feel like just because we've been good to people, they're supposed to be good to us. It don't always work like that, Eric. Just because you gave them an idea that they benefited from, it don't mean that they're going to acknowledge that they got the idea from you. So the Bible says, all those people, but he gave his money away to, not one of them said, you can stay with me. Not one of them say, I'll take you lunch. Not one of them say, here's some money. Bible says he had no help from anyone. And can I suggest if you're under 18 or a little bit uh, under 30, stop expecting people to do right by you. Have a mindset that, that you're going to take care of yourself. But can I suggest, like this young man, he requested his inheritance. He removed himself from his father's protection. He regretted his actions. But the fourth thing that you see here in verse 17, he remembered his past blessings. The Bible says, and when he came to himself. There's somebody in the room. You grew up in the church. But you left the church. And what has that gotten you after being out in the world? I know there's somebody who here by past experience, you can say amen to this. I went out there in the world and I realized that the world was not what, what it was all made up to be. And I made the decision. I, when I came to myself, 
when I came to myself, when I made up my mind that I had it better in my father's house than in the world, when I made up my mind that I can do a whole lot better than this because my father's servants are living better than I'm living, he, when, he, when he remembered his past blessings, there's somebody in the room, God has blessed you time and time again, but your memory is short. You need to come to yourself. I had somebody tell me yesterday they came in themselves. Boy, it's good when you come to yourself. Boy, it's good when you remember that the, the lessons that you learned in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, it came back to your remembrance about how God is a good God, how God is a merciful God, how God is a loving God, how God is a forgiving God. And you came yourself and said, in spite of all the wrong that I have done, I, I'll be better off going back to my father's house. Can I tell you one more thing about this? I got a few more things about this. Uh, the Bible says here in verse 18, he said, I will arise and go to my father's house and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your high servants. You know, you know what happened? He returned with a different perspective. You know, the, the, uh, they got a lot of great universities. They got Grambling University, Prairie View A&M University, University of Texas, uh, Texas A&M. They got a, a lot of great universities where you can get a degree from, Dallas Baptist University. But I'm going to tell you, there's a, there's a, deg there's a university that, that will give you the best education in the world. It is called the University of Hard Knocks. It will give you a great education. So when he graduated from the University of, uh, of, of, of Hard Knocks, he came back with a whole different outlook. He left with pride but came back with humility. You know, pride will, you know, the Bible says that, a, that a, a, a pride coming before destruction and a haughty spirit before great fall. He was like Humpty Dumpty. He sat on that wall called pride and he fell down. And the Bible said, and the song said, all the kings, and all the king's men couldn't put him back together again. See, when you fall down and you go to the wrong doctors, they can't put you back together again. They don't know how to mend a broken heart. They don't know how to handle a troubled spirit. They don't know how to give you peace at midnight. But there is somebody you can call him at any time of the day. His phone is always available to answer your call. He, you'll never, ever get a busy signal. You'll never be put on hold. You'll, and I, I hate to be put on hold. As soon as you ask, I say, can, I, can you hold, please? I can't even, I can't even answer. And they didn't cook, they didn't put me on hold. But when you call on your father, any time of the day, he will answer the call. That's good news. Now here was another thing that happened with the son. He repented before his father with humility. He, re in other words, he changed his mind. Can I tell somebody in the room, you need to change your mind. If you keep following the ways of the world, 
you're going to end up being greatly disappointed. But if you, if you, if you, see, I'm talking about the power of love. So you got this messed up son who lived, who made some bad decisions, realized he made some bad decisions, came back with a different perspective, Alice, and said, Father, I have sinned against you and heaven. He, he had, uh, uh, Curry, he had changed his mind. He had repented. Now listen to this. But I want you to see the Father's love. Here's what the Father said. When he arose and came to his Father, but when he was still, this is verse 20, a great way off. Do you know, this is what's amazing about God. He didn't leave the same way. When he came back, he looked totally different. He may not even have had those Jordans on. He may, he may not even have had the suit coat that he had bought or, uh, in the mall. The truck he lost. His clothes were now ragged. But it's something that's so peculiar, but it's so so great. His dad still recognized him from a great distance. Can I tell you, I don't care how far you go, God will recognize you no matter what you got on, no matter what you've done, no matter what you did, because a father's love is that kind of love. He'll see you from afar. And the father did not have a condescending attitude and say, I told you so. I, 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 I told you. See, see God, God doesn't condemn us. He wants us to come back to him. So Sherry... Not one time did the father say, hmm, you can't come back to my house. See, reconciliation does not take place unless the offended party is willing to take back the offender. Some of us will never have healing in our homes, healing in our relationship, because we've been hurt and we've decided that, that, that we ain't going to ever talk to them again. The problem is, the problem is you think that you got time to make up, but guess what? It may not happen. And so if you're going to ever get it right with your kids, ever get it right with your brothers and sisters, ever get it right with your parents, you better start, you better do it now. And if you're ever going to get right with God, you need to do it now. Look what it says here. While he was still a great way off, Father saw him and had compassion, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said, Father, I've sinned against you. The, the son had rehearsed everything. So the one thing I want you to know is the father recognized his son from a distance. Number two, the father rejoiced at his son's presence. You know, when you come back to the house of God, don't you know God is grateful that you're here? He glad that you decided to change your mind and, and, and be in right relationship with him. God didn't bring up your past. And the other thing is, the father received him back without condemnation. But there's another, there's another piece that's missing, Brother Ivory. Here it is. That was the oldest son who was in the field. Brother Will, he heard the music playing. New dancing was taking place. Ask, what's going on? Why? Why is everybody partying? It's a work day. 
And the servant said, it's because your brother has come and because he has been received him safely and sound, your father decided it was going to be a barbecue. And then, but here was the brother's response. The Bible says the brother was angry. And would not go in. Listen, can I, can I, can I just get down a little bit closer? See, when people come out of the world, after having made mistakes and regretted their mistakes and remember from whence they come, and, 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 and some of us have been in the church all our lives, and then we see those no good rascals come, come down the aisle, what? we get all upset. You got the wrong attitude. You got the wrong perspective. You, you so upset that they, they didn't did all this. Now God going to take them back in. Can I suggest to you something's wrong with your thinking? You ought to be happy when the prostitute come into the church house. You ought to be happy when the drug dealer come into the church house. You ought to be happy when the ex-pimp come into the church house and they have changed their mind. They have a whole different perspective. They realize that the world is not what it's cracked up to be. And there you are with your coldness. You got your... You don't want them sitting on your road, so you put your bag, your coat, your shoes all across the aisle so they won't have a place to sit. What kind of attitude is that? Thank you, uh -huh. oh, you make the place. Who are we to deny anybody an opportunity to come to God's house and get well? And then the brother, who was the older brother, told some lies. One of his lies, he told his father, is this. He said, you ain't never done anything for me. I've been here the whole time. Well, the Bible says in verse number, in verse number of, uh, uh, in verse, the, in verse number 13 and 14, the Bible said he gave them their inheritance. In other words, he gave, when he gave it to the younger son, he gave it to the older son. So, so that was a lie. The other lie he said, which sometimes we do, here's what he said. I've never transgressed. Hmm. I ain't done no wrong. I ain't never, I ain't never done no wrong. I ain't lied on nobody. I ain't gossip on nobody. That reminds me of a joke I heard. Man got, man at church, just joined church and trying to live his life right. And sister so-and-so, the church gossiper. Saw his truck at the liquor store. What you Got on the phone and called everybody. Yeah. Told everybody so and so a drunk, so and so an alcoholic, and, and, and just accused them of of of, of, of all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's just a quiet man trying to get right with God, Angela. He he, she accused him. He didn't say anything. He didn't tell her that he had a flat. He didn't tell her that he had to go into the, go into the liquor joint so he could make a phone call. He didn't even get mad and cuss her out. He was trying to do the right thing. So when he got his truck fixed, he parked his car outside her house. <laughs> Left it there overnight. Y'all get that story. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. You'll pick it up. You'll pick it up.
Well, I need to stop. The oldest son had faulty recall, had a failing response, but the father wrapped it up by saying in verse 32, it was right. It was right. Can I tell you why we take the Lord's Supper today? Because God accepted us with all the sins that we have done. All the riotous living we have done. And he loved us so much because he knew we couldn't get back to him in our own strength. So Jesus, the great intercessor, hung on the cross between heaven and earth so that you and I could have a fellowship and a relationship with God, reconciled us to him. And that's why I don't care where you are or who you are, if you'll just come back to God, he'll accept you because he loves you that much. And he will cleanse you up. He'll, he'll, he'll give you a new, a, a new wardrobe, a new walk, a new talk, a, 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 a new hairdo. Everything will be new. Sister Beard, I said everything will be new. Because he's that kind of God. So when we take the Lord's Supper today, we're not taking it because we're perfect. <coughs> We're taking it because we've been forgiven. There is no greater love than God's love. We're not taking it because we're better than so and so. The truth of the matter is we all have sinned and come short of his glory. But he is willing to forgive us and cleanse us and declare us righteous in Jesus. So when somebody comes to the church who, who hasn't been in church in a while, don't look at them at the, the wrong way. Give them a hug. Let them know you're glad to see them. Show them some hospitality. Say, hey, come sit by me. Brother Kenny, if you got your... Uh, Bible, uh, go to 1 Corinthians. <coughs> and I'm going to ask our deacons to get ready. And to anybody who's here who have not received Christ as their Savior, you have an opportunity to get saved today. <coughs> I'm going to ask Brother Taylor if he would read for us 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through verse 26. Come on up, Brother Taylor. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. We're going to ask our deacons, if you'll come, Minister Sutton, Taylor.
Now, the Bible says, let a man examine himself. You don't eat the, and, and drink of the Lord's Supper unworthily. So you examine yourselves, amen? Amen. amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus. In obedience to your word, Father, you declare that as often as we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, that we do show forth your death until you come again. So I pray, Father God, that we will take this bread, which symbolizes your body, and the cup, which symbolizes your blood that was shed on Golgotha's hill. I pray, Father God, that we will do this in remembrance of Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed for our redemption. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. It was his blood. It was his blood that makes the difference. It's what his blood. Wash away my sin. But the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I that came streaming down. My
that you hold in your hand it symbolizes or represents the body of Jesus which was hung on a cross he was pierced in the side blood came running down from his head with the thorns on his head as we take this bread we eat this bread in remembrance of his body which was broken on the cross for our sins. May we eat together. The juice that's in the cup, it represents the blood of Jesus, which was shed on Calvary's cross for our sins. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So as we Drink this cup. We drink this cup in remembrance of the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. May we all drink together. If there be anybody that's here who you heard the message and you want to be reconciled with God, you may be asking, Pastor, when can I do that? Or how can I do that? Right where you are in your seat. You can say, Father, I come back home. I receive Christ as my personal Savior. Right then and there. You confess like that, like that prodigal son says, Father, I've sinned against you. Confess. And the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And if you want that you already profess, you already confess. And you're a believer, but you're strayed from the Lord. I'm just simply going to ask you to come back home. Amen. Yeah. Now, they said, the Bible said that they sung a song, a song, a, a hymn on the Mount of Olives. So we're going to ask you to stand. Now, as we leave this place. I'm asking that we leave in one accord. Amen. 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 Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne. To the only wise God be power, glory, majesty, and dominion. You are excused. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service. We pray that you have been blessed.